you managed to clock up a debt of um, <laughs> 2016 uh, or 2017, about $120,000 in debt. And um, we had somewhat of a plan of how to pay it back, but we didn't want this to drag on for years and years and years. So uh, one thing I know I'm um, particularly good at is when I have an end goal in mind, working back from that end goal, and I wanted rid of that debt within 12 months, and um, that's exactly what I did. Obviously laid out 120 grand over the course of 12 months was gonna be a debt repayment of 10 grand a month and so on and so forth. And um, just with the help of MP figuring out the strategies that we could uh, immediately employ to increase our revenue by that amount of money uh, every single month. So we sat down, like what we were just talking about when it came to finance, we figured out, okay, this is our issue, this is our problem, it's a big fat number of $120,000 and we need to tackle it head on. Let's figure out and start uh, strategizing on how we're going to do that over the course of 12 months and let's just get to work. Hi, this is Sean Greeley and welcome to the Secrets to Their Fitness Business Success Podcast, where industry leaders share their secrets, strategies, and step-by-step -step systems to turn your fitness passion into a highly profitable business. Now, after you've listened to the show, head on over to npefitness.com slash podcast to download the show notes and get access to our free e-course on how you can start and grow a profitable fitness business. You'll see how over 45,000 fitness entrepreneurs have created more profit, revenue, and happiness with their business, and get instant access to our three most popular fitness business building guides. The training is 100% free, and you can access it now at npefitness.com slash podcast. Now let's get on to the show. All right, coming to you from Los Angeles, this is the Secrets to Their Fitness Business Success Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Greeley, founder and CEO of NPE, and this is episode number two, Big Challenges Equal Big Breakthroughs how Wayne and Steven paid off 120,000 and got debt free in 12 months. I'm excited for this interview with two amazing NP Pro Mastermind members, Wayne and Steven, who own the Training Loft in West Hollywood, California, USA. Uh, these guys have been NP clients for four years now. And in this interview, you're gonna learn about how they've achieved tremendous success through overcoming adversity with immigrating to the United States from Ireland, uh, starting a garage gym in their home, building up their business, and then getting told they had to cease operations in four days and opening a new facility. Uh, and how they've achieved consistent best months ever in business, paying off six-figure debt, and continue going from strength to strength by taking the right mindset and action to every challenge that presents itself. You're going to learn a lot from this episode, so be sure to take notes, and let's jump in. All right, welcome to the show, guys. I'm here with Stephen Carney and Wayne Dunn, who own the Training Loft in West Hollywood, California. They've been uh, long-time NP clients for several years now. Uh, they're in our NP Pro Mastermind program for quite some time. I get the pleasure of working with them and seeing them regularly. They're also not too far away from me as the crow flies here in Los Angeles, California. And uh, very excited to have you guys for the show today. Welcome, great to have you here. Thank, Thank you, Sean. Great to be here. Great to be here, thanks. Awesome, so to, for those um, kind of hear a little bit of the background story, you guys are, are from Ireland. You're native Irish heritage, uh, came to the US as immigrants and have an unbelievable story, but tell everybody where you're from originally. Yes. True Irish cabbage eating folks, indeed. <laughs> yes. Um, so, originally hail from Dublin, Ireland, um, city centre boy. I uh, was born there, grew up for a few years in Melbourne, Australia, and uh, moved back to Dublin. Uh, thoroughly uh, love the country and miss it dearly sometimes, but uh, you look out the window and then you realise why we're here so yeah that's where i'm from yeah and i'm from cork which we say is the real capital of ireland and um, so i've done my traveling as well i lived in london and i lived in paris for a while and then i moved back uh, and then moved to dublin so that's where i actually met way we both worked in an investment bank um, and that's where we met yep. so that's where it all started awesome so uh we have a lot in common we, so we, we 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 all live in los angeles and california we're also have irish heritage uh yeah. we're fair-skinned and and a little bit of ginger and all the good stuff so um i love uh we, we share that as well so um you, your background in the fitness industry you didn't start in fitness you guys started in finance uh i know wayne you're uh have degrees in uh mathematics and actuarial science so tell everybody just how you guys got into fitness in the first place 
Yeah, yeah. I'm a total nerd. Um, so went to Dublin City University, got a degree in actuary of finance and mathematics. Um, absolutely loved it with a passion and uh, still do to this day. I think I always will. Um, but once I left university, got into the corporate world and very quickly saw a huge decline in just overall uh, physical shape, ability, endurance, all those kind of things to the point where three years after leaving university, I was 30 pounds out of shape and was just something I was never, ever used to. I was always pretty fit and active in uh, school and university and uh, just hated it. And from a financial perspective, uh, working in uh, actuary was very rewarding, but from a physical and health perspective, absolutely hated how I looked and felt and energy-wise and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately, I found uh, an amazing trainer and an amazing place uh, in Dublin, Ireland, where I started training called the Duco Gym. And uh, they literally turned my life around from a personal standpoint, uh, eventually left the uh, financial world, went back to school, um, did all the things I needed to do to become a personal trainer and joined a Duco gym. And that's how, uh, that's how it all kicked off for me. Yeah. Um, and kind of the same. I worked in Trinity College for a couple of years and I was there in front of a computer for sometimes up to nine to 11 hours a day. Um, even though I used to go to the gym, it was just something that I, I liked to move around. I liked to, I kind of always liked health and fitness. And then I kind of watched my dad suffer from cancer a lot. So um, that kind of edged me towards the fitness industry and wanting to be healthy and, uh, and help others as well. So that's kind of how I connected with Wayne and um, in investment banking. We both kind of wanted the same thing. Then we got the opportunity to move to California to work for a, 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 a to manage an open gym studio. It's, that was a big yes for us. The very easy yes. Yes. Yeah. So, so tell us how you came to the States and what started your journey here. Sure. So um, worked with Educo Gym for a few years. Both of us ended up working with Educo Gym. Um, we were in investment bank. We met in the same bank. We decided to leave together, work for Educo Gym together. Um, wonderful synergy. And uh, one day the CEO of Educo Gym came to me and said, hey, I have an idea about opening one of these locations in uh, Los Angeles. I don't think he even had finished the word Los Angeles and I was like, yes, <laughs> I'll go. And uh, it was supposed to be originally for a two year uh, stint mm -hmm. where we were gonna come over, open a location for him in downtown LA, which is still there and still thriving. And uh, that's exactly what we did. So our two years came and went very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. 2010, we uh, looked at each other and said, I don't, I don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> so, when you when, wake up to the blue skies and yeah. just when you're in California, there's so many places to see outside of here. Um, and then we just love the lifestyle. It's a very healthy city. Um, the food is great. So it's, it's, it's something that we really loved and we didn't want to go. So yeah, um, that was the opportunity for us to say, okay, let's sort out our green card and we want to stay. So, yeah. That was, a, that was a journey in itself, that yeah. whole visa journey. But, um, but we went back to the CEO. We said, hey, listen, we want to stay. He was more than happy to keep us on at that point in time. Um, and we stayed there until 2012 when we eventually went to him and said, hey, listen, we've offered you everything we possibly could uh, at this point in time. And we'd like to leave and do our own thing. And obviously, we'd love your blessing in that. And he was more than happy at that point to... Uh, to give it and we, we still stay in touch with that guy, an amazing guy. And uh, we have a great relationship ever since then. But we left in 2012 and we opened up Training Loft and, and that's how it began. Mm -hmm. When I say we opened up Training Loft, we opened up in our garage, in our house, mm -hmm. and we started training a friend. <laughs> so when we left the Jupiter gym, we had no clients at all. So we had to start from scratch. So we, we just texted a few friends and said, if you're looking for a trainer, um, we have a garage in our house. Um, 
Did we say if you're looking for a trainer or you better be looking for Pretty a trainer? Much. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. You better help us right yes. now. Yes. Yeah. So we, we started off in our garage and we started from one and then in the space of six months, we had like 30 or 40 people coming in and out of our property, um, which our neighbors were kind of on what's going on there. People yeah. would come out sweating after 30 minutes. You know, like <laughs> what kind of business are you guys running? So we got a letter from the HOA uh, one day and they said, guys, we understand you're running a little home business, which is great, but not permitted. And um, that began really the training mm -hmm. off. We went trawling the streets that very day. I'll never forget, it was a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. We went trawling the streets looking for an available location in our neighborhood. Uh, at the very end of the day, we found a location at 307 South Orlando Avenue. We went in, there was a business in there, it was a marketing business. And uh, we spoke with the, well, we asked to speak with the landlord and this uh, great lady came down, Desiree. And we said, hey, we, we, we want this space. We need this space. We know this company is moving out in two months, but we need to be up and operational by Monday. <laughs> so <laughs> she thought we were absolutely crazy, but she entertained us. And uh, that was Wednesday. And following Monday morning at 6 a.m., we opened the training loft in that space. Yeah. She moved that company out into an available space that she had. And we moved our machine in mm -hmm. over the weekend by hand. And... Uh, it was four brick walls and we yeah. just started training our, we texted all our clients on a Sunday night and said, hey, by the way, you're not coming to our house tomorrow. We found this mm -hmm. local place and it's our, our, our new gym and you can come there. So uh, that was the, the birth of the actual I gym. love it. I love it. <laughs> we went around all that weekend. We even ran to Home Depot. We bought flooring. We bought plants to make it look great. So yeah, we put everything. Into it. <laughs> we, could, we could afford two plants at that time. Yeah. So, um, but it did look great. We have pictures which we love to share. Anybody who's uh, oh, we'll share those. We love to share those. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We got to break those out for sure. <laughs> um, Just don't awesome. judge the clothing then. But. Yes. No. 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 <laughs> So I love it because in, in your story, like many successful entrepreneurs, you know, is marked with a big challenge turned into a stepping stone and a, and a jumping off point to the next opportunity. Right. Um, and um, I know we'll talk about this a few times in the conversation today, but um, talk about, you know, your, your, these, this leap, this is a big leap, right? You're like, okay, we're either can't operate a business or we're, signing links and finding a way to open a location in three days right four days yeah. yes pretty much that was that was our ultimatum it was yeah. we're, we're either going to lose everything that we've built in the last whole six months um which to us was our life you know yeah. it was our life back then it was either do or die it was that or go home and um you know we knew we didn't want the alternative so it was you know get out there and do whatever we figured was necessary to maintain what we had uh, developed at that point in time and, and that was it and um, mm. uh, that's how it you know that was the ultimatum for us at that point in time was like get this place open by Monday morning which we did and uh, and it was chaotic yeah. <laughs> and you still have a life to live like we had to pay our rent at home we had bills to pay so yeah. we had to create something to, in order to to get income in order to do that and yeah. to live here so it's uh, you kind of have to hustle and just be determined and move forward yeah i think the one thing we always knew though was where we wanted to be and what we wanted to do and who we wanted to serve mm -hmm. and you know why we were in this business in the first place and how it transformed our lives into something i think you know 15 years ago if you were to ask us hey in 15 years time you're going to be living in los angeles you're going to own a studio in los mm -hmm. angeles and uh you know we would have thought you were absolutely crazy but as you go along the journey and start to figure these things out, it's, uh, it's incredible the effect that this lifestyle and this journey has had just on our personal lives, our professional lives, on, on every aspect of who we are right now. It's just been an incredible uh, transformation from so many different perspectives, not just like health, um, but mental, everything. And uh, just to be able to impart that to other people and see what's possible um is uh is an incredible gift to, to say the least so yeah i love it and you know i think it's fair to say that there is no greater person development uh journey than deciding to become an entrepreneur and starting your own business you're going to be faced with everything you can imagine and uh 
you know, will you allow yourself to be transformed? Uh, because it's, it's, it's required, not optional uh, to continue. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the one thing um, I remember my mom and dad always kind of, you know, instilling in me from a very, very young age was that the only thing constant in this world will be change and you move with it and you adapt and you figure out difficulties and problems and issues as and when they come and, uh, and, and, and you figure it out that way. And, you know, one thing NP have always taught us was, you know, that there are no problems. There are just the perception of that problem that becomes the problem. And, uh, and I think that was a huge part. Uh, it, was, it was almost like a stamp of approval learning that from MP. It was always, kind of, I kind of had that idea, but now I'm hearing it from other very successful uh, entrepreneurs within NP. And I feel part of this community that all experience uh, what we have gone through as entrepreneurs. We thought we were so unique, you know. <laughs> and then we meet all these other amazing studio owners at NP and they all tell their story. Uh, which is, you know, which are very unique, but the issues and the challenges and the hurdles are all very similar in that journey. And it's amazing to share those and understand that, you know, you, you haven't been alone. There's been other people that have gone through everything you've gone through. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a wonderful feeling to feel mm. part of that community. Problems. I know it's silly, but it's kind of comforting when you hear other people with the same problems as you. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you, know, you kind of, sometimes you feel you're in the, the boat yourself, and then you hear other people with, with certain things, and you're like, okay, so you just go move ahead and deal with them. Everybody else is, so it's just part of life. Yeah. You're not the unlucky one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're not alone. Yeah. So let's let's jump into 2015 when we first uh, came to each other. You start, first started working with MP. Tell everybody what was going on in the business and how did you find us and what encouraged you to engage MP? Yeah, sure. Um, so three years on in business, um, you know, we found out uh, that we were not the uh, masters of the universe that we thought we were. You know, and it's unfortunate, but that's just simply the case. And uh, we figured out that we were surviving um, in business and we were, you know, from our training in risk analysis and finance and all that kind of stuff, we were doing some of the right things, but um, we had no clue how to grow. We had no clue what was important. Um, at that point in time, I think we always just felt it was if we could just get more clients, you know, <laughs> and it was that type of mentality. And, uh, Getting more clients is what, you know, 20% of the battle almost, you know, and uh, there's so much more, which we always knew, but we just didn't know where the resources for, for that unknown were going to come from. And uh, we were getting your, uh, your emails that were coming out at the time and we were reading them. And uh, a lot of them made a huge amount of sense to us. There was so much information in those emails that just clicked with me and um i remember one day I, we must have been getting those emails i would say anywhere for about six months before we actually said you know let's 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 give these guys a call and uh that's where it all started was just reading uh that information making it click with us have it resonate with exactly the point in time that we seem to be at at that point which was stuck we were just at a point where we were like, we've gotten this place to where it is right now, but we have no idea of what the next step is or should be, where we should be putting our resources, how we're going to figure all this out, and how do we continue to grow and expand so that we can help more people and employ people and all that kind of stuff. And uh, lo and behold, I picked up the phone one day and I called in and um, made an appointment to meet with, uh, with Rick, mm. um, who, was a, who was an Aussie, and I was so happy to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we, we, we made an appointment and we met, and he just did the most wonderful presentation to us that seemed to resonate with exactly the point in time that we seemed to be at mm -hmm. right then. And it was just a, like literally a no-brainer for us to... Mm you know, try this out and see how it went. Yeah, and we were okay to say, at that point we were kind of stuck. We didn't know what changes to make. Yeah. And uh, we're not afraid to say that we kind of needed help with our business at that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I yeah. think, you know, I, and, I, and I think it's not because I'm on the podcast with you, Sean. Um, had we not made the decision at that point in time, 
there is not a hope in hell or a chance that we would be sitting here right now thinking of opening up a second space before mm -hmm. January. There, I absolutely know that with hand on heart. And uh, as I said, I'm not just mentioning that now because I'm on a podcast with you. I know that from the bottom of my heart, um, for sure. Um, when we um, made that decision, it's, um, it has been the best business decision that we have ever made. We made decisions about who we were employing, where we were going to spend the limited dollars that we had in terms of marketing or getting in new people or whatever it was. Um, prepared to control our finances so much better. Yeah, and from your your guys' guidance with that, um, I think that for us the the big changes were the opening bank accounts, and um, which was a huge, I think, a huge thing for us um, because we had everything in one account, and then you guys taught us to separate everything out, and that was an amazing. That we saw a very quick transformation with that. Um, so that was amazing. So we thank you guys for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, getting back, it was it, it was in in um, just going off what Stephen said there. It was getting back control mm. of the chaos that we had created ourselves by being in an arena that we were uh, unfamiliar with. Even though we had a background in finance and we had a background in risk analysis and all that kind of stuff, it was gaining back control and realizing that we are in control, you know, of, of where we decide to go with this, not the banks, not debtors, not creditors, not clients, not all of these kind of things that we seem to be reactionary to when we first open a business and you're like, you just want to please everybody, but realizing that, you know, you're in control and it's very easy to gain back that control and actually do a job that's, you know, incomparable to the one that you've been doing for the first two or three years in business, you know? Um, so that's a, that was a huge, I mean, just massive. I don't even know if transformation is the right word. This is, you know, something different. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm glad you brought that up because I think, um, especially for a lot of facility owners, they, they go to a point, right? We kind of, we, we get clients, we serve clients and then we're stuck. Um, and we find very often at this point, um, exactly what you stated people think right i just need more clients <laughs> but that's the wrong area of focus to to grow the business right and a lot of the the success starts with number one understanding the money math that drives profitability and cash for the business it starts with digging into finance it starts with the area that's the most uncomfortable to actually deal with right and you have the least confidence and confidence in figuring out small business finance is not is not investment banking it's a different world right uh and we've got to go figure out, you know, things like our cash forecast. We got to understand what a PL is, what a balance sheet is. We got to set up different systems that make us make decisions about our cost structure and our margins and packaging pricing. And so all that is, I don't think there's a more uncomfortable place to begin, um, but it is the most important work to begin with to set up the next run. Um, and I'd love for you to just speak to, you know, working through that process. Cause I think, I think frankly, a lot of people are just scared to deal with it and they just put their head in the sand and think that, I'll just focus where I'm comfortable training some clients or going to figure out an ad or something that is an area that I feel good about and I'll avoid this thing. And if I just bring in more clients, there'll be more revenue and that will figure it out itself out. Uh, but that's not the case, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, uh, you know, that kind of mentality we realized for us very quickly was, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a fungus, right? It just grows. You have this problem, which could be, you know, how much you're charging clients um, to get more clients and, and, and the notion and idea that if I just charge less than the guy next door, well, then I'll get those clients. And that whole race to the bottom mentality um, and then transforming that idea into charging what, you, what you're worth first and foremost, and believing in what you're worth and then making sure that all the margins are correct so that you can sustain a profitable business and have a healthy net profit at the end of the year um, is just transformational. And while it can be very uncomfortable to deal with, I think once you get into it, you actually develop a love for it eventually. You really do because it is a true mirror of how you are doing as a business owner and how effective you are at managing and running your business because we all have opinions about uh, how we are. If you ask me, what do I think of myself? I'm, I'm brilliant, you know, <laughs> but sometimes I look at the numbers and I'm like, okay, I'm not that brilliant, you know, um, 
So numbers don't lie. And uh, it's one of the real true mirrors in your business is to start to really take a look at that stuff and dig in and, and tend to it like a garden, you know? And that's how I always describe my numbers to, uh, you know, the staff and all that kind of stuff. You, you know, those numbers, you don't just try and fix them once and that's it. It's a garden, you have to keep tending it. And if you do, you'll end up with a beautiful garden at the end of the season or at the end of the month or whatever it is, you know? Um, but if you avoid it, you're going to start to see the weeds and the weeds are going to start to take over very, very quickly. And they're going to start to kill the nice things that are, you know, in that garden. Um, and one of the big things I think we both learned from MP is just looking for clients. Like, you know, we're looking for the ideal client, the right type of client. And not everybody's going to be right for your business and your business is not going to be right for everybody. And when we joined you guys, we kind of saw that we're like every person coming through the door is always not the right person on the right fit. Um, so, you know, in order for your business to grow, you kind of want the right type of people coming through and the people who nourish and flourish there in your business and, and love being part of the, the family that we've created. So um, that's a big thing I think we learned when we joined in. We can't be everything to everyone yeah. and we don't want to be everything to everyone because we'll end up serving nobody. Yeah. And, uh, and that was a huge part of what we learned from MP. And it all drives into what we're talking about, which was the numbers and making sure that they're all, um, they're all in check. And, and, and you're absolutely right. It's, it's sometimes the most horrible thing to dive into. But I tell you, when you come out the other end, it's, you feel amazing about it. You really, really do. There's no greater feeling of relief and stress relief and all of those kind of things than understanding precisely where you're at even if it's bad in your business because then you know i think what causes a lot of fear in business is that fear of the unknown it's fear of oh god i think my books are all over the place or i think my margins are you know pretty crappy but if i just keep you know Trucking on, I'll be, I'll be good, you know? And uh, mm -hmm. removing that sense of uh, uh, wandering around in no man's land is um, oh, one of the best things that you could ever possibly yeah. do, as uncomfortable as it is sometimes. But as we all know, dealing with the uncomfortable things in any situation is, is always the most rewarding thing to do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm so glad you stated that. And really, it's just, you know, whatever it is, figure out what the problem is and get a plan yeah, yeah. <laughs> and work that plan until you need to adjust to make a new plan and just keep going. That's really all it is, right? All the time, regardless of the problem. Yeah. Um, we just right. gotta, we gotta, we got, just like math, we gotta analyze it and we gotta have a plan. So every, every equation has a solution. Um, you just yeah. gotta figure that out. So um, one of the things I think I'm, I'm, I'm is so inspiring about your story um, is, you know, being in, in a West Hollywood where everything's expensive and facilities require a, a ton of investment and in not just your lease, but your build out, your equipment, all the stuff that is required. And you guys, you know, like many facility owners, accumulated a significant amount of, you know, six figure debt that need to be addressed uh, through growing the business. And um, a lot of people feel like, oh gosh, I can never overcome that challenge. And you, um, over the last, you know, couple of years, you paid off all the debt, like, which is crazy. Um, I mean, I feel like we should be on the, you know, on the Dave Ramsey show here. Just <laughs> streaming that free. Uh, so tell people about, you know, where it was and, and how you work through that, because that's, you know, it, it took consistent effort for, you know, more than a year, right. To, to oh, make yeah. something happen. Um, and, and I'd love you to share that story. Yeah, it really did. Um, and I think, uh, to go back to, you know, where we met with you guys in 2015 and fast forward two years, we realized that a huge part of um, what we wanted to offer our clients was an amazing client experience, um, not just from the perspective of when you come in, you're going to get a great workout and you're going to leave. We wanted to create the ultimate beautiful um, uh, experience for clients and a huge part of that was the environment um, that we wanted to build and stand in front of and be very proud of and um, it, it comes at a cost and, and we had a facility at the time and it's still the same facility but we decided to overhaul it and revamp it and, and, and completely um, gut it basically we knocked down walls and built walls and all that kind of stuff um, but lo and behold, yeah, all of that stuff comes at a, at a massive cost, but we, we thought it was, it was worth it because this is the kind of experience that we wanted to create for people. And we knew at some point it would um, be a, a, a great investment 
Well, we knew at that point it would be a great investment, and we also expected a return on that investment. And, you know, fast forward a little bit, two years on from all of that, it has been an incredible um, uh, investment for us uh, to the point where people walk into that location every single time and they just, they're wowed by, by how it looks. It's just an amazing space. And uh, we're very, very, very proud of it. And we managed to clock up a debt of um, <laughs> 2016 uh, or 2017, about $120,000 in debt. And um, we had somewhat of a plan of how to pay it back, but we didn't want this to drag on for years and years and years. So uh, one thing I know I'm um, particularly good at is when I have an end goal in mind, working back from that end goal, and I wanted rid of that debt within 12 months. And um, that's exactly what I did. Obviously laid out 120 grand over the course of 12 months was gonna be a debt repayment of 10 grand a month and so on and so forth. And um, just, with the help of MP figuring out the strategies that we could uh, immediately employ to increase our revenue by that amount of money uh, every single month. So we sat down, like what we were just talking about when it came to finance, we figured out, okay, this is our issue, this is our problem, it's a big fat number of $120,000 and we need to tackle it head on. Let's figure out and start uh, strategizing on how we're going to do that over the course of 12 months and let's just get to work and that's exactly what we did it took us about three four weeks to figure out the strategy um, and it was you know it seemed like wasted time it was like oh we could be out there selling this we could be out there selling that but it's um, you know as you always say it's uh, it's the shocking of the axe you know and uh, that's exactly what we did with the help of our coach at MP we just sat down and said all right how's this gonna look over the next 12 months is it going to be a lot of work? And it was mm. a lot of work and it was very stressful year. Um, yeah, I think it's one of our biggest challenges really for both of us. Yeah. Um, when we looked at that amount that we owed, it was like, how are we going to get through this? How are we going to pay this? It's like, was it worth it? We, we talked about other points. It's like, I, we have a beautiful building, but is it worth having $120,000 in debt? Um, but again, we both... We had our ups and downs on it for sure, but we talked about it with MPE's help. We were able to move forward and it started to pay down then. We were like, okay, it's, it's going, it's going. Um, and by the end of the year, we were like, it's gone. So we were like, we were ecstatic. It was like, I think it was one of the biggest challenges we ever had to face looking at the field. Um, but by the end of it, it was like, okay, we got through, if we got through that, then we can get through anything. So. Yeah. As long as you're clear on, and I think this is, you know, uh, a note to self for absolutely everything. No matter what the challenge or the problem is in front of you, if you have and you manage to sit down to create a strategy and a plan to attack it, it no longer becomes that problem. It becomes something that you're dealing with. And as long as you're dealing with it, it's no longer that problem, right? Because it's just something that's a work in progress. It's in motion. It's it's on its way down. It's you know, and that goes. I, anything that I've ever dealt with in business and I was asked a question there recently you know what's one of the biggest uh, transformations that you have gone through and you know I think when people are asked that question they're very often looking for you know material things that uh, have happened to them like you know oh well I got 10 more clients so I got you know this new machine and got this and got that for me um, one of the most valuable things I think I have um, received from MP since since uh, 2015 is my ability to deal with problems um, and understanding the nature of problems are constant um, it's how you attack them and deal with them that will make them either a problem or something that you're just dealing with in business and 99 times out of 100 it's something that you're just dealing with in business very very often it's not the problem that you perceive it to be in any way shape or form it's just that you just don't want to deal with it and that becomes the problem so that going through all of that uh, turmoil that year of, of you know all the hard work and looking at this debt and all that kind of stuff taught me a lot and uh, mm -hmm. and it was it was great to get to the end of that strategy we dealt with it it all worked out and it's uh, you know now we're back to zero debt 
a beautiful building and something to be extremely proud of and uh, from so many different perspectives. But yeah, that's how we dealt with that. And I think dealing with that has, has obviously led to our next problem, which we remember we got the notice on the door. About oh, yeah. so, 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 so we'll pause just, just for one yeah. second. And so, <laughs> wait, adjust it. <laughs> yeah, to set up the next story. So, so first off, just, you know, I, I, I just, I can't say congratulations enough. We're, we're so proud to support you guys in your journey to see what, you know, because many times I think financial pressure and debt is one of the most excruciating stresses for every human being, um, not just business owners, and entrepreneurs, uh, but for everyone in life, you know, you feel like uh, you're not in control and you feel like it's a hole you can't get out of um, really, but you can't, as you said, you just need a strategy and a plan and a mindset and you just work the plan until the problem is solved, whether it's, you know, a month or three months or six months or a year or five years, it doesn't matter. You just yeah. keep working through it and you come out the other end with more strength and more confidence and, and more, you know, firepower than, than anything else. I think, and I want to just ask you to speak about how you felt once that was completed. Uh, yeah. Like, and how did you get, did you, did you, did you celebrate any special way or what did you do? You know, well, it was just another day at the office or how did you guys uh, take the time to acknowledge that moment? Be correct. It was like, it was like, it wasn't even a celebration. It was like weight just kind of lifted yeah. off our shoulders. It was the biggest celebration you could have asked for. Yeah. Which just it's, weight off your shoulder. Yeah. We just, definitely had a drink. For sure. <laughs> Maybe a couple of drinks. We are Irish. Um, but yeah, it was just, it, it was kind of like that heaviness over your head of, of thinking about what you owe. And even though the plan is in place, it's kind of like when you finally get there and it's, it's gone, it's kind of like this, this weight, which you can't really describe, but it just it just lifts off your shoulders, and it's like phew, you can take a deep breath and you can kind of relax again until something else pops up. But it, sure, I but do remember calling Stephen in on that morning that the final payment was due to be taken out of our account, and we I literally sat there for hours refreshing the bank <laughs> script to see when it would go, you know, and it eventually went, and it was just. I don't know the the feeling that came over me, but it was definitely one of a very proud uh, uh there was a definite sense of amazing achievement and uh yeah the pressure was lifted i felt like i could start to move all that brain power from where it was over to creative and uh and start to see how we you know build and build on what we have already spent and all that kind of stuff one thing i did want to mention though that was so helpful throughout that year and i think a lot of entrepreneurs do this i know i certainly did this steven's done this um, and I know some of my friends who are entrepreneurs do this. When it comes to debt issues or financial issues, it's something that we don't want to discuss with other people. It's mm. private. It's embarrassing. It's mm. shameful. It's all of these very strange notions that we attach to something like this. And carrying something like that on your own shoulders is, you know, just multiplies the burden, you know, um, and the one thing that really helped me through it was number one, having a business partner that you could go to at any point in time and say, hey, shit, I'm having a bad day. I'm stressing about this and blah, 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 blah. But just sharing it with other people like NP, like coaches, like, you know, other people in NP um, was just like offloading that burden. It's not that you want to offload your issues onto them, but just sharing what you're going through with people and have people come back and go, don't worry about it. I was there two years ago. I did this, blah, blah, blah. It's just reassuring to hear that from other entrepreneurs and people who support you. And I think that's one um, huge learning thing for me was that share these things with people that you trust um, and uh, yeah, all of a sudden, it's, I, don't, I don't know what magical things happen when you start to open your mouth and talk about your problems, but they, mm. they, they, they tend to subside very quickly after that. You know? So that was a huge help just to have a shoulder to kind of go to and say, hey, I'm having a bad day or I'm stressing or anything like that. It was uh, massive. And then when the coaches show you other clients who you, you guys are working with who had debt and then it's gone, it's kind of like when they share them things with you, it's like, okay, if they can do it, we can do it. And it gives you more of a positive attitude towards it. So yeah. that really helped us in that year a lot. Yeah. And then debt doesn't become so fearful anymore. Structured debt doesn't become such a horrible thing as long as it's like everything else. It's planned for. It's uh, affordable. Uh, you've done your homework. You've got the best deal possible. and Money costs money, uh, so there's interest on top of it and all that kind of stuff. But as long as you've done your numbers and you know all that kind of stuff, 
shouldn't be a stressful situation. It should be a very healthy, natural part of growing sometimes, you know? Um, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, that, that's, that's my attitude towards that right now. So, yep. Well, well said. I'm glad you took the moment to just talk about this because I think this is such an area that, as you said, people are ashamed of and they are um, scared to address and to acknowledge and to speak with someone about. But uh, I think the number one thing, if, if, you're, if you're facing any of those issues, just, just face it head on, ask someone for help. You can't figure that all out yourself if you don't have the experience to do so. And then you got a plan. And, and again, so many times it's, you know, the stress level comes down when you just have a plan and are working a plan, right? It's a structured plan. It's not free fall chaos and overwhelm, right? So um, thanks for, for sharing that. Um, yeah. The other thing I want to talk about is, so you guys, this was a major milestone for you in your journey, right? It, celebrating, paying off, being debt-free, paying off six-figure debt, um, and continuing through that, growing, having your best month ever, you know, uh, milestones and huge profits, exceeding goals, stacking cash, right, which is what everybody wants. Well, now you're there, right? Uh, and everybody wants it tomorrow. It might take a year <laughs> or two years, but you'll get there, right? Uh, and you got there. Um, and, um, but, you know, I think the, the thing about being a business owner entrepreneur is, once you get through one challenge, uh, you know, you'll have a little breather and then there'll be another one. Right. Uh, and you guys had a really significant one come up, um, that I'll let you tell the story in, but you, you came into work one day yep. and there's a notice on the door that says eviction. Get out. Yeah. Literally get out. Yes. <laughs> so it's exactly right. Um, so our first trainer, he starts at six 30 in the morning. Uh, he sends us a text at 6.30 a.m. So we go, all right, there's something wrong. Um, and he said, hey, there's some weird notice on the door. Uh, I think you guys should see it. So <laughs> lo and behold, we go down and it is a, a notice from um, the building owner's lawyer to say that we are illegally occupying this space, which we've been in for almost eight years now, um, and that we have... 30 days to vacate and uh, if we don't, X, Y, and Z is about to happen to you and we're gonna send, you know, He-Man in to get you. Um, and this was a day before we were due to go on vacation. Oh yeah, we were, to go for yeah. Days. we were due to go on vacation that day. So that was a beautiful start of the vacation. Um, so of course, uh, the initial thing, of course, when you see something like that is sheer and utter panic. Um, we've never received a legal letter or notice before in our lives. Um, so we, uh, we, we had to sit down and again, figure out what the hell this was all about, why we were getting this eviction notice and all of that kind of stuff. And uh, what transpired as a result is that the building was sold. The, the lady who had owned this building for many, many decades had passed away. She left it to a trust. The trust wanted the money. They, they were trying to sell it to a, a private investor and he wanted everybody out before he would pay over the money for it. And then they were looking for any little thing within our contract to see if we had violated any terms and conditions or anything like that. So it was just the start of a process of trying to remove us from the property, even though our lease is valid until 2022. Um, so it was uh, <laughs> shocking to say the least. But again, like everything else, um, I remember sitting there with a notice that day and I said, this is a letter from an, a, a lawyer. It's an intent. It's a, it's a notice of what they would like, mm -hmm. but we are gonna have to go through a process here to understand who's right and who's wrong. And the one thing that I remember saying to myself at the end of the day was the only person that can decide on this and who's right and who's wrong at the end of the day is a judge. And we feel that we have done everything correct and right and we're not in violation of any of the terms or contracts or clauses or anything like that. They feel that we are in, uh, in conflict with a particular tiny sentence in one clause of, a, of, of something or other and, uh, and we'll just take it from there. So we contacted you know, the necessary people uh, that we needed to contact our lawyer, um, then we contacted MPE and we said, guys, help. <laughs> Never been in this situation before. What do we do? Um, and to be honest, like a couple of years ago, we probably would have flipped out at this and probably hit at home for a week and was like, what are we going to do? Um, but because we've been with MPE for a number of years and we've talked through so many challenges with them and we've had so many problems along the way, which they've helped us with, 
we were actually very calm. Um, and we yeah. were like, okay, we got this notice. We talked about it. And we said, okay, we're still going on vacation. Let's yes. just ring the landlord and sort out whatever needs to be sorted out before we go so we can still enjoy ourselves. Um, but yeah, it was a process. We got, it's a, just another problem which happens in business. You have to deal with it. And I think from MP's experience of helping us, we were pretty calm in the situation. Yeah. And before we would have pretty freaked out. So yeah. Um, yeah, it was a good feeling. <laughs> it, it really was, and it was uh, it, it was a it was a huge teaching point for me. It was a huge learning point for me about myself as well, in terms of like how I'm going to deal with adversity and how I'm going to deal with issues that come up. Um, because as I mentioned at the start of the you know the call there, when <laughs> the great thing I saw the other day from a guy was, I'm so glad that my business has problems because if it didn't, we'd likely be out of, out of business. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's like, okay, this is just the next uh, evolution of issues that we are going to have to deal with and we're going to come through it. We're going to go through uh, a whole court proceeding, which is going to be massively educational mm -hmm. and to see how all this works out from an American perspective. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to be a process. It's, it's going to be, yeah. So we have time. Um, if we do need to find another location, we have, we have time to do that. Yeah. Um, but it, it was a case of, you know, here's an issue that we have to deal with, deal with it. And uh, don't, you know, try and sweep this under the carpet and not deal with it and hope it goes away because chances are it's not going to go away. I mean, it's definitely not going to go away. Um, so deal with it and do what you can up to that point in time to the best of your ability to deal with that issue. But there's only so much that you can do before the next phase and the next phase and the next phase. So there's a plan laid out. So as long as we have a plan together and what to do moving forward, we're a lot more comfortable than if we don't have a plan, then I think we'd freak out. So yeah. that planning process is a really important education tool. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny sometimes how you know the universe works because we've been talking about opening a second space for a very long time because where we're at right now is you know we're, we're almost at capacity i think we'll always be almost at capacity never at capacity right, right. Uh, there's always space for one more um but we've been talking about this and toying with this idea and talking with our coach at mp tiffany about this for for a long time we've been doing all the planning figures all that kind of stuff um and uh this was kind of like the perfect opportunity for us to kind of go why don't we make that second place now rather than this plan that we have to do it sometime in the near future? Um, let's start putting dates on things and let's start holding ourselves accountable to uh, a plan and a date and a cutoff time for X, Y, Z and that can change and all that kind of stuff. But let's start putting real serious numbers together and start viewing places and all that kind of stuff. And that's exactly what we did. And, um, you know, within the space of probably a month, we've seen a huge number of places around West Hollywood that we would be very happy to open. But one particular place that we absolutely have fallen in love with, um, and we're probably going to put an offer in on it within the next seven days and issue our letter of intent of what we would like and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So it's been a kind of like, this has been a, if anything, a catalyst for mm -hmm. us to kind of move forward with that notion of opening a second space. And um, if it's, a, it's it, the next space that we open will be so close to where we mm -hmm. are right now mm -hmm. that if we, you know, continue to keep that momentum going and if anything does happen to our current space we can simply continue the business over onto this new space that we're about to open without any hiccups it's it's probably less than a mile away from where we are right now uh, it's in a beautiful wonderful neighborhood of of west hollywood and it's um so yeah it's just been one of those things where the universe has this strange way sometimes of kind of like pushing you towards the, the, the idea that you always wanted to do. And this has been a great excuse for us to kind of move along with that because, you know, left to our own devices, we probably would have toyed around with the idea of a second space for a lot longer, you know, but now we're kind of like, let's get this done so that if anything does happen with the current space, we're still okay, you know, we're still okay. So and instead of even worrying about it, when we saw it again for the second time yesterday, like we were both very excited again. It's like, it's, it's like that meeting when we first opened Trading loft in Orlando, it's we, we kind of got that feeling back, so it's, it's a great feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another thing we share in common. Your your old Orlando address, and we were originally based in Orlando, Florida. I know. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, 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 yeah. so funny. Um, <laughs> Okay, so um, and just to share with people, so you're 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 on the cusp of opening second location, um, and uh, uh, you're 
to give some context, you're in the high six figures with business revenue and moving towards seven figures uh, plus, uh, which is a big milestone for you guys. That, that'll be, I know that's coming down the road in the next uh, you know, year or two as you, you continue to grow here, which is super exciting. Yeah. Um, and uh, what are some of the other the big pieces that you're working on now? Um, so big pieces we're working on right now. Actually, just to say, if we have the same growth next year as we intend to have this year, we will push it from six into seven figures, yes. uh, which is really, really cool and very exciting. And uh, it's just, a, you know, it'll be another one of those milestones. What we're working on right now is obviously uh, space number two. Um, and a huge part <laughs> of that was one of the things that we've kind of been messing around with for the last couple of years is employee compensation packages and then how do we continue to attract uh, the type of employees that we have right now which are career professionals they are incredible at what they do and um, absolutely massive passion for their for their craft and mm -hmm. for their uh, for their business but one of the areas that we have always been concerned with is what are the career progressions for these staff? How do we continue to engage them, um, not just physically, but mentally and financially? And how do we create the path for them to see there's a huge future here for you? And not just, you know, in five years time, you're gonna be our senior, senior trainer. You know? <laughs> um, so that was a huge push for us in opening up a second location, third location was to create career paths for uh, the wonderful people we have working for us and say, you know, uh, the career path for you, as I see it right now, is to move on to manager, studio manager, uh, part owner, blah, 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 so on and so forth. And, uh, and that's one huge area that we're looking at right now. Um, we always look at our staff. We try to look at our staff as business partners rather yeah. than people who work for us. Um, I, They've been there, or Adam has been there up for five years. Almost five. So we like, the, we like to keep our staff, and I think that's built our business hugely, rather than the turnaround of changing people all the time. I think it's very important to look after your staff, mm -hmm. to make sure they're happy, and to always talk to them, and make sure they're always motivated, and even to talk about problems like we do, we do with MPs. Like when you talk to your staff about what they're going through, or if they have any concerns or issues, I think that's extremely important. And um, I think it's one of the reasons why our staff are still there. Um, so yeah. we, we definitely want to see them progress and that's very important to both of us. Yeah, it's a huge, it's a huge thing for me to be known as uh, you know, a really great place to work yeah. um, is one of the things that I would love to have as something said about us. You know, it's mm -hmm. a great place to work, not just from a social aspect of, you know, um, uh, you know, they come in, they have a, a lot of leeway in terms of what they do because we don't treat them as employees. I always tell them, we just took on a, a new guy. I said, I, I'm not hiring you as an employee. Just so you know, I don't need an employee. I need a business partner. And I need you to take that role uh, very seriously. And, uh, and that's what we're looking to employ. Um, but yeah, I want to be known as, the, as, as a great place to work for, for people, you know, and not just a great place to work, but a great place to work out and uh, a great place to hang out. And, yeah. uh, and I always want to be thought of as that. So. Yeah, and people who want to come to work. Like you want to see people mm -hmm. happy coming to work and not just going there to, to get a check. You know, it's yeah. kind of like, when you see our staff coming in every day, we love seeing them, you know, and that makes our day. I and mean, that's why we love going to work and being part of the business. It's because we get to hang with them and we get to see them work. And it, it, it's kind of great every day to wake up to them and go to that. So. Yeah. And mock them and make fun of them yeah. and do all that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's all fun. <laughs> awesome. So I'd love just kind of as we wrap up this interview today, just uh, think back about, because there's going to be people listening to this that are, you know, where you guys were in 2015. So mm -hmm. have, a, have a studio, have kind of flatline growth the past, you know, year or so, uh, maybe more. Um, and what advice would you give to yourself back then that, you know, knowing where you've come from in the last four years? So hindsight is always 2020 vision, right? So looking back now, if I could see myself, it would be just, Oh my God, do, do this. You need the help. You need the assistance. I think every successful person business in the world has somebody who coaches them in some way, shape or form. They have a very trusted network of people 
who are constantly around them. And while they put themselves forward as the successful one, very often what we don't see is the team of people behind them that make all that happen. For us, that team has been NP, uh, all the coaches, and all the other studio owners that we get to mix with every single day if we want to and uh, ask questions and all of that kind of stuff. We would have never been in the position that we are now if it were not for the coaching, guidance, support that we received from MP. My advice to people who are kind of at a point where they're like, should, will I, won't I, will I, won't I, will I, won't I, is like what I would tell anybody who comes into our gym and who's unsure about whether or not they should start training, is you, you clearly have something that you want to deal with. It's a pain point. It's, uh, it's something that you need assistance with. So try it. Just mm. try it. Dip your toe in the water. You know what? What have you got to lose? If you figure out in three months or six months or 12 months time that you know this is not for you, so be it. But we've been here four years. We have known most of the other studio owners have been you know, our colleagues for the last <clears throat> same period of time. And uh, it's something that we consider a, a necessary investment in our business, in our growth, in our future, in our peace of mind <laughs> to know that we have people there to, uh, to look out for us and, and look out for our best interest. And um, I really say that from the bottom of my heart. And I wish if I could impart anything on somebody out there who's kind of thinking, Will I won't I? Is this an investment that is worth my while, is worth my time, is worth my hard earned cash? My answer is an emphatic yes. Um, try it. Absolutely. I don't think you will ever look back and I don't think you will ever regret making the investment into your business. And I think it's one of the most important things that we have ever done. And I think the same would be true of every single member that I speak with in MP and get to meet with personally three times a year when we're on our mastermind meetings, but daily on Facebook <clears throat> groups and all that kind of stuff. It's a, an incredible resource. And I feel some people might not join because they might be ashamed of the problems they're having in their business. And I think that's a big thing. It's kind of like when we first started, we were probably like, oh, we should, maybe we shouldn't mention this or maybe we have this debt. So we'll keep that out. <laughs> Um, but like now we are like we're so comfortable with saying anything to MP members about anything that we're going through because I know they just help us kind of figure out a plan to deal with that. So anybody who's kind of on the fence about like oh I don't want to tell about what I'm going through in my business, let all that go and just die for it and just open up and your problems they'll help you with your problems and moving forward. So yeah, I just want to give that advice to any MP members who are thinking of joining. It's oh, fine. That's, that's it's so fun. Fun. I'm go sorry. Ahead. Yeah, it's no, like people it. who come to us and they say, you know, I wasn't going to join you until I lost 20 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> so, right, yeah. right. Oh, no, that's why we're here. We're yeah. here to help you. Um, but very like what, you know, we were back in 2015. It was like, you know, this seems right for us. They're saying all the right mm -hmm. things. This is resonating with us. But maybe we should get X, Y, Z in order before we even go yeah. there because we just need to you know, appear perfect. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's the total opposite. And, you know, I think people will resonate with that story of the people who come into them and say, you know, I, I, I'm going to join you as soon as I lose 10 pounds, you know. <laughs> and I know it's silly, but when you actually join and you have a problem and somebody, somebody who's already been there shares it with you and then they've got through it at the other side, it's like, oh, my God, so I can do it too. So it's kind of like that feeling is amazing when you see other people that haven't gone through what, you, what you're dealing with right now. I think that's a, a huge boost to anybody in business. Yeah. Yeah. And I think just, you know, I'm so glad you said that because it is so much like a metaphor. People think that I have to get in shape before I join the gym. No, you yeah. just have to join the gym to get in shape. <laughs> right. Um, and, and oftentimes we think that, oh, well, you know, I'll, I'll, I have to wait, you know, six months or a year, or a certain amount of time to, to get an answer to that problem or to start to be able to work on that problem or think I'm ready to engage that problem. But really, you can start now, literally yeah. this moment. You pick up the phone, you talk to someone, you join, you go right in the group, you get an answer, jump on a call tomorrow. 
you're creating solutions and you're finding new possibilities and new ways to get to the other side. Um, and you know, the only one holding, holding, holding you back from that is yourself, right? So, uh, just your own fear and your own insecurities. And we all have to be able to, to face ourselves in the mirror and, and tackle that, you know, again and again on this journey. And that's the first step. So. Yeah, exactly. And you know, just on that metaphor, you know, so people who come in, they say they want to lose 20 pounds could take that person a year to lose 20 pounds or we can tell them how to do it in a month, you know? And it's, uh, it's, it was the exact same for us with MP. We, we, we would have spent the next 20 years figuring out some of the stuff that we're, you know, putting into practice every single day. Um, when people, when we looked at MP initially as well, it was like, all right, we're going to put this investment into our company. How long was it going to take before we start to see a return on that investment? And I can tell you, it was it, it, pretty immediately. We, we, we did groundwork to do. We had, you know, reading to do. We had homework to do. We had all that kind of stuff. <laughs> but it was, you know, let's take this one part, let's implement it, and boom, there's a massive change in our business immediately. Mm -hmm. Now, next part, next part, next part. It's just this huge jigsaw that comes together. And uh, it's, it, it happens straight away. It's mm -hmm. not a you know, dip your toe in the water and you'll see something happen in 12 months, 18 months, two years. It's, it's for that section of your business, it's immediate. And the, the result is very apparent, very, very quickly. Awesome. Well, I'm excited for people to listen to this story. Uh, hopefully, you know, those that are out there thinking about joining NP uh, and if you, you, when you come to our pro program, get to meet Wayne and Steven at an upcoming event. Uh, and uh, we're so excited, so excited to see your new facility coming soon. Mm -hmm. uh, I look forward to, to being at the grand opening with you before long here, before the end of the year. <laughs> We'll, uh, we'll bring the family over. We'll bring the dogs. So, <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, yeah, we all, and we all have puppies too. That's another <laughs> sure comment. So, uh, awesome. Well, guys, thanks again for being here today. Uh, congratulations again on your tremendous journey and we look forward to speaking with you again soon. Pleasure, Sean. Thank, Thank you Sean. so much. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to the secrets to their fitness business success podcast with me, Sean Greeley. If you like the show, then head on over to npefitness.com slash podcast to download the show notes, subscribe, and enter to win over 25,000 in free prizes we're giving away to celebrate the launch of the show. Be well, and we'll see you in the next episode.